Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff, and I'll be your host for the show. Before we bring on tonight's guest, if you've had a Dogman Encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, please go to bigfooteyewitness.com and submit a report. If you listened to parts 1 and 2 of episode 233, you heard John come on and talk about all the dogman problems he's had on his property. Well, after we recorded that interview, unfortunately, John's had some more encounters, and that's what he's come back on the show tonight to tell us about. I want to thank you for coming back on the show, John. You know I appreciate it. Please update us on what's been going on since we did that last interview. Well, let's start from the beginning, I guess. Um, First, I I need to give you a layout of what my driveway and the front of my house looks like, because this pertains to my neighbor's home. We sit 150 yards back from the main road, and uh, there's three houses on this on our drive. We share the drive between three homes, one up for the front by the road, and two at the end of the driveway, one on the left, one on the right. I'm on the right-hand side. And as I told you in the previous show, when I laid the foundation for my house, I set it eight degrees east from dead center north on the compass. That's the back of the house, and the front of the house would be southwest eight degrees. And when you come down the driveway, and I'm on the right-hand side, if you would, would picture a the number seven, my driveway runs parallel with the front of my house. And picture a number seven laying down, and the long part of the seven would be my driveway coming off the main driveway. And then the seven hooks, like on an angle, back. At the end of that seven would be my garage. And so... When I was, this was Monday, the 7th of 2019 at 4.45 a.m., I was going to work. I was pulling out of my, my, my garage and I back up and then I go to the main part of the driveway, passing the front of my house. And as I was driving by, I see uh, something moving and just at the edge of my headlights. And, uh, as I'm driving and getting towards the main drive, this dog man, I, well, what actually happened was I scared him coming down my drive with the headlights, and he ran into my neighbor's, the western part of her house, and she has motion lights there. And he ran right into a motion light and turned it on. And I could see him perfectly clear. And uh, he was uh, he was two-toned. He would, The upper part of him was... Uh, brownish red, and the lower part was uh, beige, or maybe even blondish, because that's what I probably ca- saw in the lights. I saw something move, and um, so he was small. He was no. He, if he was five feet, I, I'd be amazed. He was small. He was wa- running on two feet. He looked like a dog running on two feet. He was covered in hair. He had somewhat of a chow head, but. Uh, it wasn't pr- pronounced. The head was proportional to the body. I got a side, a f- angle view of his front arm. Um, there was no human skin on this thing. It looked all dog. But the hands were real tiny and black. Um, not like the other ones I've seen. The, the hands were big. Uh, the, these hands were tiny and black. Now, he was probably over there trying to go to the to the deer feeder that Billy has in her front yard. So he ran off. I, I got, a, just like I said, a glimpse of him, and he just took off right into the woods. Um, but I got a good look at him, and he wasn't that big at all. I didn't see his face. I just saw his hindquarters. He had a small tail, maybe a uh, foot long, and I can see the tail clearly. But I made him run right into the light, the, the sensor, and he kicked it on. And then that was on Monday, and on the ninth, Wednesday at 5 p.m., 5, 10 p.m. This is, I, I came home, and um, now I I can't explain this, and, and, and both the Bigfoots and the Dogmen do this, and I don't know how they do it. No matter how quiet we are, no matter if the blinds are closed, if the, if the blinds were closed in our bedroom, 
If we sneak in our bedroom, they know we're there. I don't know how they do it. And they'll, the boogers will hit us with a stone or something. Well, this thing, I had the blinds closed in the bedroom, and I went back into the back master bath to, to, to shower up and get cleaned up. And it it was exactly at 510, and I hear right outside my window, two howls. I mean, they were loud. And that's unusual for them to do it in uh, daylight. Usually you hear them at night, except for the experience I had with the woodpile. They never do it during the daylight hours. And he howled twice. They weren't long. They were short howls, but he, he made his presence known. I'm almost thinking that it was the same one. He's kind of mad that I busted him with the light I, that when I saw him the day before. So those are the two incidents that happened since then, since uh, I did the show. Nothing else has happened. There's other ones, the, the sinister dog man I haven't seen since the baby Bigfoot ran through the backyard. And so they, they must have left because the Bigfoots are definitely here again. It seems like the encounters on your property are almost nonstop, John. How can you relax if at any time you're likely to have another encounter? That's what, see, when the dogman came in, this it all changed. That, I was trying to explain that. I told you the Bigfoots have a, they were, they did, they stay for three days and they disappear for 10 to 12 days and they come back. They, they had a cycle. Now, it's, 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 it's almost continuous. It's sporadic. You'll go two days, nothing. Three days, and then you'll see something or you'll hear something. Then you'll go one day, then you'll, you, you'll hear something again. Then you go five days and then you'll hear something again or see something. It's, I don't know what to understand. And another thing that just recently has been happening that, we were talking, me and my wife were talking about tonight. I'm never seeing the same dogman twice. Every one I see is different. In the last, well, up to the 23rd, from the 23rd of December till now, every one I've seen, other than those four that, that were, that group that came in on the 20th of, of November, I saw them almost every night. But any other dog that I've seen was different. They're not the same. So it's almost like they're passing through, like they're migrating, and they just have, and maybe they smell the other dog that came here, so they want to check out where the other dog are checking out our area, and they're passing through to see what's going on. I don't know. But the dog men that get busted over my neighbors and even in my yard, they, you know, once you get busted with the lights, they don't come in on you. The, the, these outside lights are a lifesaver. Because they don't like them and they stay away from them. The boogers, they would, they would challenge to try to get around the lights, but they stopped doing it. But uh, yeah, we're, we've been seeing different ones on a regular basis and I don't know why. Why do you think the dogmen and Sasquatch on your property interact with you so often? Well, the Sasquatch, because they know me. The dogmen, I just happen to be at the right place at the wrong time. Uh, and, uh, the Sasquatch, they know me, and uh, you know, when you go in the yard, you get a tree break, you get a stone thrown, uh, and then that's it. They don't scream at, well, they do scream, but not all the time. Um, if I get too close, I'll get growled at. Or, or if they, if they startle me, or I startle them, they'll scream. But other than that, if we, if, if they see me come into the yard and they're out there, they won't do anything other than make a tree snap. And, um, uh, like when I was at the burn pile and they threw that big melon sized rock, they broke two branches prior to me walking over to the edge there to see what was going on. They wanted to see my reaction and I, and I reacted. I just wanted to see what they were doing. I didn't see anything. And then they threw that huge rock and then that was it. They didn't do anything else. I went back to burning and they watched me burn and, and I went in the house. But the dog man, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, I'm constantly looking, and then you get, you know, you get tired of it. I could look every night and stand outside in the windows or go on the back, on the back deck and scan with the thermal. I can do that. And I probably could have more sightings, but I don't. I'm a, I have a life. But if I hear a howl or something hits the house or, um, I'll hear something unusual, a scream, I'll go to the windows and check it out. And usually 75% of the time, I see something. Yeah, it seems like it's nonstop on your property. Goodness gracious. 
it's been this way for the last since these guys arrived, Vic. I mean, the Bigfoots wasn't it wasn't ever that bad. I mean, well, it was in the beginning. They were really bad when we when I saw that big alpha male. The next three months, we were scared to death. We were we were talking about moving uh, because they were they were rattling our cage. Uh, they would wait for me to leave for work every morning, and every morning, huge tree snap, huge, like a rifle went off. I mean, you think about it. You walk out of the garage to go in your car, and then bam, you hear a ba- explosion. Uh, they did that for a month, and then they stopped. And they, I, I'm assuming, and I'm assuming this. They just got used to me. He said, that, and there's nothing we can do about it. And then he knows, and he knows we're out here and there's nothing he can do about it. So let's just get along. And that's what they do. Uh, these dogmen, that's a whole nother reality. Since they've been here since last March, it's been like this all summer long. It's like, you'll never know when it's going to happen. You never know when. That's what I told you. I don't own the property anymore. I believe we had that conversation. And uh, if the property's not mine, they own it. I just live here. Well, thank goodness, at least the Sasquatch are so easy going. At least you have that going for you. Yes. Well, like I said, in the beginning, it wasn't that way. And then I didn't know too much about them. You know, I learned. Uh, but once we, like I said, we settled in and we got used to each other. It's I know they're there and they know they're there. You get too close, they they growl or they'll scream. And uh, and so you back off, no big deal. Everybody's happy. But these dogmen, uh, especially those ones, well, the ones that I, I saw that one month the, from November to December 23rd, those guys were really scary. And I'm glad we didn't. That didn't happen in the summertime when I had to go out to mow the, mow the grass because I had a feeling something bad would have happened. Yeah, it wouldn't have been good if you had to move the lawn, if you had to worry about a thousand plus pound dog man around. So yeah, I can understand you saying that. That that's that's really scary. That's really scary. Yeah, I'd say it would be. That guy hasn't been around for for a while. I haven't seen him in a long time. The big one. But uh, these guys here, the two that were down at the at the at the range, they were over. They were at least eight feet tall. Because their eye shine was two feet above the, the target mound, and the target mound six feet. Yeah, that's pretty big. Not like the one that you mentioned before that was over a thousand pounds, but that is pretty big. Yeah, the, that one here, he was massive. He was like nine feet tall, and he was massive all over. That's the one that peeked around the corner of the house when I was, went left for work twice. That really scared me. And it, it was almost to a point where I was going to carry a shotgun out when I left for work. I, I don't know what was going to happen. Yeah, he sounds like he was a specimen. You said something a bit ago I want to touch on with you. You do realize that dogmen will come into well-lit areas if they have enough motivation to do so, don't you? Yes, I do. All the stories I've heard, they do do that. But for some reason, they don't do it here. And this is the reason why, I think. This is my... Because I thought about that. I think that they realize they're in a heavily human population. Well, they have humans all around them. It's not heavily human. We're out in the country. And I think they realize, or they could have had in the past, some encounters with humans and became aggressive. And the world fell down. And then somebody dropped a bomb on them and the world caved in on them and everybody came out to get them. And I think they realized that, and I think they said, well, we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to get away with what we can get away with. We're not going to step out of, out of line to go and cause trouble. Like, you know, some of these ones you hear, they come on the porch, the light's on, and they're they're, they're jiggling the doorknob. They, thank God they haven't done that. My wife would go out of her mind if they did that. I don't know, that that would probably be the last straw. Most people would lose their minds if something like that happened, so I totally understand. I mean, you know, it's bad enough, you know, Linda's seen them, and and uh, it's bad enough for what she's seen. She's not seen them in the daylight yet. She's only seen them with a flashlight and the thermal, and that's bad enough. And, uh, you know, she does not want... These things are on the property. She, you know, she don't mind the Bigfoots. The Bigfoots are really shy. And, I, you know, I think what has happened, 
Now, this is my, uh, I'm just guessing here, but when I saw that alpha male and then the trouble started after that alpha male, when he ran off, we had trouble for three months. I have a feeling those were type two uh, Bigfoots. And then I think the alpha male threw them out of here and they haven't been back. And I think all we have is alpha, uh, type ones here now. And they're kind of laid back, even though they're bigger, they're kind of laid back. And they don't bother people as much as the type twos. That's what I think happened. Um, because I think there was type twos and type ones at that time here. And I know there were because I've seen both of them. So, uh, they don't, I don't see too many type twos anymore. I always see, well, there's one, there's one down at the end of the range. He does it like once a month. I'll be out in the yard or something and I have like four or five um, oak trees behind the mound and uh, one of them is like two and a half feet in diameter and he, I'll be in the yard and I'll look down there and he'll stick his head around the side look at me for two seconds and pop his head back and um, you can see his hair's long and and his hair's round it's not combed um, that might be a type 2 but um, I see him once a month uh, on a regular, it's not on a, well, it's the third week of the month. I got to go out there and poke, poke my head around the corner. It, but I do see him once a month. I've, it's been like four or five months I've been seeing him. But uh, other than that, they, that's all they do. They haven't bothered with us. They don't mess with us. It's the dogmen that I'm concerned about. Like the one that, that was in the trail. Uh, and I'm sitting on a lawnmower and I'm going, oh my God, he's going to turn around. And I'm waiting for him to turn around. I figured there was going to be a fight. And uh he, he didn't. I don't know why. They, they get focused on one thing, and they, they don't see what's going on around them until they get focused on another thing, and they don't care what's on around them. They, they go after that one thing. And he didn't turn around and look at me. And I thank God for that. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't, too. Thank goodness. This might seem like a strange question, but if the encounter suddenly stopped and you never saw another dogman or Sasquatch in your life, would you be at least a little disappointed? No. Not in the least. Not in the least. I would have my property back. And I would feel a lot safer doing yard work and enjoying my property. I mean, if, if, I can guarantee that there's not, they're not out there. I would be 100% relieved, 100% relieved, and I wouldn't regret. And I would just toss that under the bridge and say, well, good, that's great. But I hope that's uh, – I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I really don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's going to. Like I said, it might sound like a strange question, but – some people, even though it's not desirable to have them around your property the way that you do, some people get addicted to that adrenaline rush of looking out the window and seeing them. There's one over there, or there might be one over there, behind this tree or in the woods. I wasn't really sure how you are going to answer that, but I thought I'd ask you for that reason. You know, if they're messing with me, they have to be messing with other people around here. And I have brought it up on two occasions with two neighbors, and... The one neighbor said, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Billy next door, she knows they're here. She's seen them and heard them. There's a guy back here in the back that, uh, he's an, I think, I believe he's an ex cop. He's about 600 yards back behind my property. He's actually on another property way back behind mine. And, um, I, did I mention the, the the one night I heard the, him shooting out there and it, and I heard a howl when he he hit something? You did. Okay, well that's the guy I'm talking about. And uh, I've been contemplating going back there and asking him. Uh, I haven't never I never met the guy. I don't I don't even know who it looks like. So I've been thinking about it, and me and me and my wife have been talking about it, maybe you should go back there. And maybe we can join forces together and maybe do something about these things. I could scare them off. I, I can, you know, I, well, I had, you don't know this, but when I was in the military, I was, uh, in mine warfare. We developed booby traps and we examined the Viet Cong booby traps that they made and, and devices and we counteracted them. I can set things up that, 
they'd be scared to death to walk on a property. They don't like, from what I understand, they don't like the crackling sound of those uh, crackle firecrackers. Not the regular firecrackers, the inch and a halfers. There's a firecracker that crackles, like you're crackling uh, cellophane. And uh, they don't like that sound, and they run from it. I can set things up, and when they come in there, they can trip it off and, and, and make those crackle noise. And m- maybe that might run them off. But I haven't, like I said, no one has drawn blood yet. And I don't want to escalate anything at all. I don't want to escalate. It's fine right now. Nobody's getting hurt. If something happens, then I'm going to escalate things. And we'll go from there. And we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. But I'm trying not to get to that point. I want, I want it to be as nice as possible. I, you know, I have my wife to consider and not only her, but neighbors here. I don't know, you know, I, I make one of these things mad. They might go take it out on somebody else. And I, I would, that would drive me up a wall thinking I'm responsible for them getting hurt because of something I did to them. They seem very vindictive. Well, like you said, hopefully it's never going to escalate and doing those things hopefully will never be necessary. So I guess we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed on that. I'm being very careful not to let it escalate. Uh, other than me being scared when I'm mowing, you know, if they come out, you know, I'll see a Bigfoot stick his head out the range and look at me and I'll stop the lawnmower and then he'll take off and he, he that's it. He doesn't mess with me. But that dogman that stayed in the middle of the trail, he knew, he had to know I was on the lawnmower. He had to have known. Uh, and he never turned around, but yet he let me see him. He knew I was there. And that scares me more than anything else that, it's almost like he was playing with me. And there was no way I was going to drive in there. There was no way. I had this feeling like, you know, she'd go in there and check it. I, there's no way I'm going in there. There was no way I was going to go down that trail. And um, when I came out the third time, he was gone. And that even scared me more because I didn't know where he was. And I, I couldn't see into the, into the woods because everything else was dark. So, like I said, I, I want to keep it neutral as possible. But if we get to a point where blood is drawn, then uh, I'll go to war. I don't want to do that, but I will do whatever it takes to protect my family. Oh, I don't blame you there. As you know, though, you can do everything you can to avoid an escalation, but if they push the issue, if they decide to escalate things, obviously there's really not much you can do to stop them. Well, I'm going to give it a college try. I understand. Before we get out of here, John, I want to ask you, on Friday night's show, you put out an invite for listeners to come help you with your dogman problem. Is there a certain kind of person you don't want help from? I don't want anybody that wants to see one of these things. We're not going to investigate. We're not going to research. I like somebody with a military background. Somebody that's not going to be scared and do something stupid to escalate a problem. I'm not going to bring you out here to see these things. We're going to set up cameras, and we're going to protect each other while we're doing that, and then we're going to leave. We're not going to investigate. We're not going to research them. If they think that's going to happen, that's not going to happen. I'd like somebody with a military background, and, you know, maybe when we're setting the cameras up, there's a good possibility we might see something. But that being said, I don't want somebody... Dog man and empties a 12 gauge shotgun into the thing. I, I don't need that to happen. I need somebody with, that that can handle the, the pressure and knows what to do. And that's the kind of person I'm looking for. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of emails of people begging me to want to. They'll, you know, I'll give my right arm to see a duck. Well, that, you're talking to the wrong person because I'm not going to allow that. I need somebody to help me to protect me. Set up the cameras. Maybe help me figure out how to catch these things on a camera. And that's all I want to do. It's going to be very passive. We're not going to mess with them because I'm the one that got to live here, not you. And if we mess with them and things go bad, I'm the one that's going to pay the price. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. And if I can't find somebody like that, then they're not coming out here. No big deal. It'll just stay the way it is. I really hope you don't come to regret putting out that invite. As you know, there's no scarcity of shady characters in this field. So, yeah, like I said, hopefully it's not going to come back to bite you. Well, I'm going to screen them real well uh, before I even... I'm going to ask questions and uh, 
and to see what they how they respond. But uh yeah, I'm hoping that I, I just get a couple good guys that maybe ex military that have had an encounter or are not afraid to, to be a part of this. And they're not here to see it to see one of these creatures. They're just here to give me a hand and uh they're used to a tactical situation and they're not gonna lose their head and do something stupid and and maybe even get us killed or hurt. I mean, they don't travel by themselves. I'm sure I see one over here in the range. I guarantee there's more than one out there. I guarantee it. I don't see them, but I, they're there. They're conniving like that. So that's what I'm hoping for. Well, what you described, they sound like good people to have come help you. So I hope they do show up and I hope they're able to help you do what you need to do. But having said that, John, I want to thank you so much for coming back on and updating us on what's been going on. Yeah, sure, Vic. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you know you're welcome. Thanks again so much. Have a great night. If you've had a dogman encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you.